Hi everyone, my name is Carrie Henry and I'm the School Outreach Coordinator for the Deerfield Public Library. Each day I have the joy of sharing books with the children of Deerfield, whether that's through my preschool outreach story times or through the book talks I get to give to the amazing students of our wonderful DPS 109 schools. Now because of that, as you can imagine, I come across some pretty awesome titles. And with the holidays right around the corner, I thought it would be good to share some of those titles that would make great holiday gifts, whether that's for your own children or for any special kids in your life. I'm going to be sharing great picture books, early readers and early chapter books, fiction and nonfiction titles that will make great gifts. In the video description below, you'll find timestamps for each of the sections so that you can skip ahead to the section that you're most interested in. So whether you have an emerging reader or an established reader, whether you have a budding scientist or a fan of fantasy, you'll find some great recommendations. And remember, reading together as a family activity is a fantastic thing to do over the holidays or any time. And whether your child is three or 13, they are never too old to be read aloud to. So I hope you enjoy this parent cafe on great books to give. I've got 10 picture books to recommend, and trust me, it was hard to whittle it down to these 10 titles. But here we go. The first up is We Want Snow, A Wintry Chant by Jamie A. Swenson and illustrated by Emily Boone. This rhyming, raucous, repetitive book features a group of little ones who just want snow. Quote, up to their ankles, up to their shins, up to their knees, and up to their chins. They want to sled, build snow forts, drink hot cocoa, and enjoy all of those favorite winter activities. That is, until they get what they wish for. And then they turn to wishing for the spring to come. Next up is The Shape of Home, written and illustrated by Rasheen Kereye. This is more than a first day of school book and more than a shape book. It's a beautiful celebration of what happens when we all come together to share our unique backgrounds. Rasheen is new to America from Iran and remembers fondly her experiences there. When she gets to her new school in New York City, she learns that her teacher is from Benin, and the teacher points out it's shaped like a flashlight. Then her classmate, who's from Japan, shares that her country looks like a seahorse. The children all kindly and lovingly share their own thoughts about places and shapes and are ultimately grateful that their classroom is shaped like a home. Speaking of homes, Everybody in the Red Brick Building by Anne Winter and illustrated by Oge Mora this is a different kind of bedtime story. Set in an urban apartment building, all was quiet until baby Izzy wakes up with a wah. Because of that, Rehan's parrot starts squawking. And because of the parrot, then a sleepover party stops sleeping and starts playing flashlight tag. One by one, the different noises increase until eventually different calming sounds take over and all is returned to normal. Oge Mora is one of my favorite illustrators, and her collage work here does not disappoint. Now we're on to What If Pig, written and illustrated by Lindsay Hunter. Pig and mouse are friends, good friends. Pig is kind and fun and keeps a big secret. Pig is a worrier. When Pig decides to throw a party for mouse and all their friends, Pig's worries take over in an endless cycle of what if? What if a lion eats the invitations? What if nobody comes? What if everybody comes but has an awful time? Mouse gently suggests a different what if. What if we go for a little walk? What if we all talked about our worries? What if our friends are there for us? Young readers will learn that being afraid is a common and usually temporary feeling and that when we talk to others about our worries, things can get better. Speaking of talking, next up is a book all about speaking up. My Voice is a Trumpet by Jimmy Allen, illustrated by Kathy Ann Johnson. Like I said, it's all about the ways in which we can use our voices to affect change. Whether your voice is as tall as a tree or as small as a bee, speaking up with that voice can bring good into our world. The artwork is exquisite and shows a variety of people. Some who speak with their voices or, quote, with hands that move to speak every word, unquote. I love the message that we can all speak up for what is right, against what is wrong, 
and to find joy in the fact that we are all sisters and brothers. Speaking of brothers, The Little Blue Bridge by Brenda Mayer and illustrations by Sonia Sanchez features Ruby and her brothers. Fans of this team's earlier book, The Little Red Fort, will recognize Ruby and her brothers, and this story is based loosely on the three billy goats gruff. Ruby once again has creative, scientific ideas to solve the problems that face her. In this book, it's Santiago and the fact that he won't let her cross his bridge to get to the lovely blueberries across the creek. Santiago repeats to Ruby and her brothers, I'm the boss and you can't cross unless you give me a snack. While Ruby's brothers discount her as being too small, she is the one with the solution and even brings Santiago into being part of it rather than being the problem. This is a great mix of folklore, feminism, science, and creativity, and I highly recommend The Little Blue Bridge. Maybe by Chris Houghton. I love Houghton's books, and this one doesn't disappoint. If you've got an inquisitive little one, they're going to love this tale of three mischievous monkeys who are warned to stay away from the mango tree because that's where the tigers are. The temptation to get to those delicious mangoes is just too much. And one, maybe we could just look at the mangoes, leads to a second, maybe we could just get the little mango to, you guessed it, tigers. All's well that ends well, though. Or is it? Why did the adult monkey have to go and mention those yummy bananas? This celebration of curiosity will make you and your little one smile. The Museum of Everything by Lynn Ray Perkins is all about imagination and creativity. The child in this book sometimes gets overwhelmed by the world. When that happens, they like to look at little pieces of it, one at a time. From rocks to bushes, from shadows to feathers, the museum of everything has it all. Once the child has spent some time exploring those little things, then they are ready to go back outside because sometimes they like that too. This book and its illustrations are poetic and inventive and will be perfect for the young one who collects things, dreams, and imagines new worlds. Mr. Watson's Chickens by Jared Dapier and illustrated by Andrea Surumi. Mr. Watson and Mr. Nelson live in a big honking house with a teeny tiny yard in a big honking city with a small menagerie, including three chickens that Mr. Watson loves. Everything is going just fine until those three chickens turn into 456 chickens. Quote, chickens in the sink, chickens on the bed, chickens in the bread box, chickens on their heads. Unquote. The noise of the hilarious chicken named Aunt Agnes gets to be too much for Mr. Nelson. Now, because Mr. Watson loves Mr. Nelson more than he loves his chickens, he needs to figure out a solution. What will happen to the chickens? What will happen to their big honking house? This is a hilarious, delightful book that will make you all laugh, will have you poring over the detailed pictures of, yes, 456 chickens, and rereading again and again. Speaking of looking at detailed illustrations, you'll do the same in my next picture book recommendation, Have You Seen Gordon? by Adam J. Epstein and Ruth Chan. What happens when you have the star of a search and find book who doesn't want to hide? Gordon isn't very good at hiding. He tries hiding on the beach, in a city, and at a carnival, and every time young readers will be able to quickly spot this colorful character. Gordon doesn't want to hide. He's proud of who he is and wants to stand out, which makes the narrator realize that they might need to change the title of the book and find a different character to, well, find. Jane, the backup, is shy though and doesn't want to be found. Leave it to Gordon to come up with the perfect solution. The underlying messages of consent and allyship actually work in this hilarious book and only add to the fun of seeking the characters who do want to be found. Next up on our recommendations for great books to give are early readers and early chapter books. And first is the newest Mo Jackson book. Run, Mo Run by David A. Adler and illustrated by Sam Ricks features Mo Jackson, a small boy with a big passion for sports. This book features a track meet that pits Mo's class against another class at school. Mo is in the relay race and is having trouble holding onto the baton. 
Will his pre-meat snack hurt his chances at winning or help him finally hold on to that baton? If you have a sports lover, be sure to pick up the latest in this award-winning series. Flubby Will Not Go to Sleep, written and illustrated by J.E. Morris. In the latest Flubby Early Reader, the adorable feline main character is having trouble falling asleep. Nothing seems to help. Not a squishy pillow, not a warm blanket, not even a bedtime snack. Sound familiar, grown-ups? What will help Flubby finally hit the hay? This early reader has repetitive sentences that make it perfect for an emergent reader, whether they are a good sleeper or not. Next is Give It a Try, Yasmin, by Sadia Faruqi and illustrated by Hatem Ali. This is another wonderful early reader series. Give It a Try features Yasmin in four different roles, librarian, scientist, recycler, and singer. Each story has three chapters to give young readers a feeling of accomplishment and lots of fantastic illustrations to support the story. Yasmin's family and friends are featured as she helps the school librarian, faces a science fair, comes up with a way to get her friends into being green, and inadvertently gives a concert. The back matter in the book extends the reading experience with discussion questions, definitions of Urdu words, fun facts about Pakistan, and even a craft activity. Ivy Lost and Found is the first in a new series called Book Buddies, written by Cynthia Lord and illustrated by Stephanie Gregan. Ivy was the favorite doll of librarian Anne when she was little. As Anne grew up, Ivy had fewer and fewer adventures and was eventually packed away in the attic. When at long last Anne rediscovers Ivy, a new adventure awaits. But Ivy isn't so sure she likes being a toy that can be borrowed from Anne's library. She just wants to be Anne's favorite toy again. The young girl, Fern, also wants things to be back the way they used to be. When she visits the library with her stepfamily, she reluctantly checks out Ivy for a few weeks. This early chapter book is filled with beautiful pencil illustrations and features two charming characters who help each other find a sense of belonging once again. And lastly, we've got Ties Travels, Zip Zoom, by Kelly Starling Lyons and illustrated by Nina Mata. Ty is excited to try out his brand new scooter and dreams of riding it around the twisty, turny paths at the local park. Unfortunately, Ty's dreams don't match up with the reality that he isn't a very good scooter rider. He wiggles and wobbles and falls over and falls over and falls over again. This early reader is a testament to the power of a good friend and to the old saying, if at first you don't succeed, Moving on to longer chapter books in our fiction section, we've got Amari and the Knight Brothers by B.B. Alston. This is described by the publisher as Artemis Fowl meets Men in Black, and it's the first in a new fantasy series, perfect for fans of Percy Jackson or Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky. This is, tells the story of Amari Peters, who has always believed that her brother Quentin is still alive even if the police and the bullies at her school suggest otherwise. Amari discovers a ticking briefcase in Quentin's closet, which leads her to a summer tryout at the Bureau of Supernatural Affairs. That super secret organization just might hold the key to her brother's location, if Amari can handle magicians, fairies, aliens, and other supernatural creatures all being quite real. On top of all of that, Amari has to compete for a spot against kids who have known magic their whole lives. Amari is a compelling main character, wrestling with a new world, the search for her brother, and issues of racism and discrimination. Fantasy fans are going to gobble this up and eagerly await the next installment. Speaking of other worlds, The Lion of Mars by Jennifer L. Holm is a great middle grade novel to read, in celebration of Perseverance, the newest rover to land on Mars. Belle is an 11-year-old who lives in the American settlement on Mars. He's a pretty normal kid. He loves cats, is very curious, and faces friendship issues. Belle, the other kids, and the few adults who inhabit the settlement face obstacles such as dust storms and, weirdly timely, a devastating virus. Neither of those obstacles is as dangerous as the isolation that Psy, the commander, has insisted upon. 
Bell and his friends have grown up thinking that the inhabitants of the other countries' settlements are dangerous and responsible for the death of a beloved member of the American team. But who else can Bell and his friends turn to when that virus threatens their lives? There's something for everyone in this book. Sci-fi, technology, humor, romance, danger, and friendship. Now, I am so excited for the Winter Olympics coming up in February. Whenever they come on, my thoughts turn to axles and sit spins, and I marvel at how figure skaters do what they do. In Anna on the Edge by A.J. Sass, 12-year-old Anna Marie Jin is the reigning U.S. juvenile figure skating champion. Anna is not a frilly dress kind of kid. When Anna learns that the program that has been choreographed for the next season is princess-themed, Anna starts to doubt. But then Anna meets Hayden, a transgender boy who is new to the skating rink. Hayden mistakes Anna for a boy, and Anna doesn't correct him. Anna feels comfortable in this new boyish identity whenever they're together. They become friends all at the same time that Anna is feeling really uncomfortable dancing in a frilly princess dress. But Anna and Anna's mom have worked hard to get this opportunity. Is it worth giving up everything just to tell the truth about how Anna is feeling and about who Anna really is? This is an unforgettable story about a non-binary main character who lives in a world and competes in a sport that is literally divided into boys and girls, men and women. Next up, we've got Maya and the Robot by Eve L. Ewing and illustrated by Christine Almeida. This is another story of someone stepping into their own power. Maya is nervous about fifth grade starting because for the first time, her two best friends aren't in her class. Maya's teacher is super strict while her friends have the cool new teacher. Maya is so lonely that she uses her science skills to find a new friend in the robot, Ralph. Bringing him to life creates a whole new world of connection for Maya. This story about the power of community, about adapting to change, and about being yourself is a perfect fit for third grade on up. Another book about friendship is Jojo McCoon's The Used to Be Best Friend by Don Quigley and illustrated by Tara Adubair. Perfect for grades two and up, Josephine McCoon's Azur is a full of spirit seven-year-old who lives life a little differently than the others on her Ojibwe reservation. Jojo has two best friends, Mimi, her cat, or home best friend, and Fern, her school best friend. Unfortunately, Fern may not want to be friends anymore. So Jojo has to figure out how to make more friends. This illustrated chapter book has larger print for younger readers, but is a delightful tale of learning to navigate change and be yourself for anybody. I've saved one of my favorites for last, Finding Junie Kim by Ellen O. Oh. Junie Kim just wants to fit in. She tries not to draw attention to herself, but when racist graffiti shows up at her middle school, she has to decide between staying silent or speaking out. Junie's history teacher assigns an oral history project, and Junie decides to interview her grandparents because she's never really known about their experiences in Korea during the Korean War. They were just kids then, but Junie learns that her grandmother was determined to protect her family and that her grandfather showed compassion during wartime. As racism becomes even more prevalent at her school, Junie has to learn to be as strong and courageous as her grandparents were and do the right thing. This book is told in multiple voices, Junie's, of course, but also her grandmother's and grandfather's. This story is about war, about family, hope, survival, overcoming hardship, and ultimately about being triumphant. Nonfiction books make great gifts as well. I've got five recommendations for you here, starting with Temple Grandin's The Outdoor Scientist, The Wonder of Observing the Natural World. Dr. Grandin is a person with autism who has invented ways to more kindly deal with animals. This book is a fascinating mix of a lot of things. The chapters are split into things you'd find outside, rocks, the beach, the woods, birds, the night skies, and animals. In each chapter, your young reader will learn a little bit about Temple's childhood, so it's sort of like an autobiography, but then Temple also writes about other famous scientists and inventors, so it's a biography. But then you will also learn really cool facts, so it's a science book. And then you will also get to learn all these cool projects that your child can do outside, so it's a project book as well. 
Like I said, it's a fascinating mix of everything and you will find it full of interesting facts like dogs and horses can't see the color red, but birds can see the full color spectrum. From one really unique book to another, our next book is Factopia, Follow the Trail of 400 Facts by Kate Hale and illustrated by Andy Smith. This book starts with one fact and then somehow connects it to the next and then that connects to the next and so on all the way up to 400 facts. This book, like I said, is full of amazing facts, which I completely geeked out about, but it's also sort of like a choose your own adventure because you can decide which path to take through the book. So if your young reader just loves learning small, interesting details, quirky facts, bits of trivia, this is the book for them. Another book that's full of amazing facts and even more mind-boggling connections is Jason Chin's Your Place in the Universe. Right away, the reader learns that eight-year-olds are about five times as tall as the book, but they're only half as tall as an ostrich. But it takes two ostriches to be as tall as a giraffe, which is the tallest animal on land. But giraffes aren't the tallest living thing on land. That's trees, specifically redwoods, which are as tall as 20 giraffes. But then if you move to non-living things like buildings, you can see that the tallest building in the world is more than seven times taller than that tree we were just talking about. And it just keeps going and going and going. This next book is perfect for fans of action stories or history. The Curse of the Mummy Uncovering Tutankhamun's Tomb by Candace Fleming. Now, your young one might know a little bit about the famous King Tut, the boy pharaoh who ruled Egypt and died tragically young. They might know that the tomb was discovered by Howard Carter after being buried under sand in what was known as the Valley of the Kings. Maybe they know that the tomb was full of incredible treasure and untold wealth. But they probably didn't know that his tomb was supposedly cursed. In this fascinating book that reads almost like an action movie, readers will learn that once Howard Carter opened up the tomb, ancient powers started taking their revenge for disturbing and looting the pharaoh's final resting place. Because what else could explain the mysterious illnesses, accidents, and even deaths that began once King Tut's tomb was uncovered? This book is all about the amazing hunt for King Tut's tomb, the fight over the treasures that were found there, and incredible photographs, including some of the mummy itself. Like I said, if your young one likes archaeology, history, or books that will keep them on the edge of their seat, then please give them The Curse of the Mummy. A question grown-ups will often ask kids is, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, if they read our next book, Incredible Jobs You've probably never heard of by Natalie Labar, they'll have some really amazing answers. Your kids can learn about being a dinosaur duster, a toy designer, and even a nail polish namer, a bridge painter, an astrobiologist, or an art conservationist. How about a cheese sculptor? All of those are actual jobs that people have. Your child will read about these jobs and many other incredible jobs in this really fun book. Now, if you ask any of us in the Youth Services Department what the best job is, we'd probably all answer librarian because we get to read these great books and then recommend them to you and to your kids. I hope you found some great suggestions here for books to give as gifts this holiday season. Happy holidays from the Deerfield Public Library.